लेट मी बिगिन बाय आस्किंग मिस्टर राहुल रवेल सबसे पहले तो मुझे ये बताइए आप इस इंडस्ट्री में आए कैसे क्योंकि आपके पिताजी फिल्म मेकर थे इसलिए आपको आना ही था एच एस रवेल साहब वेरी सेलिब्रेटेड फिल्म मेकर हिमसेल्फ लाइक हिज फादर राहुल रवेल इज अलिब्रेटेड फिल्म मेकर बट एच एस रवेल साहब वॉज ऑल्सो अलिब्रेटेड फिल्म मेकर तो वॉज इट अ फॉर गॉन कंक्लूजन नो इट वॉज कोमल ऋषि कपूर चिंटू वॉज अ चाइल्ड हुड फ्रेंड वी वर इन दी नर्सरी टूगेदर अच्छा एंड वी ग्रो अपूगेदर एंड आई फिनिश माई एग्जाम्स एंड ही कॉल मी इन सेट पापा इज स्टार्टिंग शूटिंग द रशियन सर्कस पोर्शन इन बॉम्बे टूडे एंड यू एग्जाम कम लेट्स गो दे फॉर मेरा नाम जोकर मेरा नाम जोकर एंड देर आर द रशियन गर्ल्स आर देर ऑल वेरिंग शॉर्ट क्लोथ्स यू नो एंड with great legs so let's go and look around at these girls <laughs> so of course we rushed this was a big attraction when i entered that place i'd seen shooting before because dad was and i never wanted to be a filmmaker i wanted to be a nuclear physicist oh yeah i did i want to be a nuclear physicist but some some sexy legs changed the course of history <laughs> i wish i wish they had I wish they had. I would have been sitting here with sexy legs all around, which are still there, you know. But so when I entered the set and I saw Mr. Raj Kapoor working, I was completely mesmerized. There was one man in the circus in the big top, controlling five thousand people, and he was like a symphony director. You know, wow. symphony conductor, one man standing and conducting this whole thing, and he knew exactly what he wanted. I stood there, watched him. I went a second day, I watched him. Uh, then I told my father, I said, "Look, I've got six months before I go to Canada for my nuclear physics, so I might as well work as assistant, you know, instead of wasting my time." And um, when I met Raj Sir, my father took me there. Raj Sir said. that i'll be very happy to work with i've been seeing you here for the last four days you've not spoken to me but i've been seeing the dedication he didn't know that he didn't speak to him because he was interested in in uh, thank you kohil thank you so much <laughs> you made such a lovely impression on these people they probably feel there's some a joke here and there never have been but am i right there's some, there's some fiend over here who's you know lurking around <laughs> and um, he told me most welcome to start working and after 6 months you can go to canada but remember one thing you will not go he said that he to said you that yeah and he knew that you wanted to be a nuclear physicist yes wow he said because this is such a thing and um, once you get hooked to it nobody goes back so wow. are you prepared for that so i said sir i will go back he said fine we'll talk later and um, i never went back i stayed here Uh, I've forgotten what physics was all about, and uh, uh, I'm glad I stayed here. It changed. So are we, because we got a great filmmaker in Rahul Ravel, and uh, thank God for the Russian circus artist. So what if you didn't have a look at their legs, but you stayed back? And I also admire Raj Kapoor Sahab's foresight that he said that you will not go back, and you actually thought you would go back. Yes, so I thought I would. it took you six months to realize that this is your calling, no, or early no, on you no, had decided. It took me exactly three weeks to decide I'm going to stay back here. Wow. So I never went back up to that. Phenomenal. That's how it started. Phenomenal, uh, Mr. Pavan Kumar. Yeah. You have a similar exciting story about sexy legs. <laughs> I have a very different story. Uh, my grandfather uh, was a Manipur dance teacher. He he. he worked as a dance director in bombay talkies and also you know my family has a art uh, history the legendary theater person uh, ratan tyam is my maternal uncle oh. uh, but it was by by accident that i i i chose filmmaking as a career uh, it was in my final year of bsc computer science that i decided oh, to do oh you have done bsc in computer science yeah okay <laughs> so i decided to do something different but also i think that was uh, i think those days it was the situation uh, you know uh, outside manipur that i suddenly realized that people doesn't know much about manipur and i you know i maybe 
cinema is the easiest medium to get in touch or tell stories about Manipur. That's how I started uh, my career in filmmaking. You know, you said you're a computer science graduate. From science to a field of art, was that a paradigm shift and was that very difficult for you? Uh, I think it was, it was I, I mean, I never thought about it, but it, it was quite natural for me because I wanted to tell stories about Manipur, a contemporary Manipur. Then why did you choose uh, computer science? Uh, those days, <laughs> MC and MBA was quite popular, you know, it was, I'm talking about 93, 96. Compulsions, but all along you knew that you had to be in this industry. You know, I'm an, I call myself an independent filmmaker. I mean, I, I, I'm not under any industry. I mean, you know, in Manipur also, I don't think cinema is, you can't call it as an industry. Uh, so, I mean, it's almost 20, 23 years of my career in filmmaking. And it, it as I have done mostly independent work, I do whatever I feel uh, like, and I make films the way I want to make films. So I very much call myself an independent filmmaker. And even now also, uh, I, I try to do something different from whatever is happening around me, you know. In such a scenario, was it intimidating, frightening for you to make a mark, or was it actually what you would have desired, that there are no compulsions, there are no industry rules, so let me do what I want. My, my, the, the world is my canvas. I've been, you know, discussing about this with my friends and I feel lucky that I'm, I, I'm born and brought up in Manipur and I still, you know, after doing my uh, graduation from SRFT at Kolkata, I did my postgraduate in cinema from Satyajit Ray Film and Television Institute, Kolkata, uh, in film uh, direction and screenplay writing. I think in, uh, so I was the only person who went back uh, and, you know, all my friends are working in Bombay, Hyderabad and Kochi and uh, so at that time I think I was uh, the only person who went back and wanted to uh, make films in my own language. So, but then I think uh, documentaries, because I started doc feature film recently, my first feature film, you know, after doing documentaries for the last 15, 16 years, I mean, I made my first feature film. It's you are still considered a debut filmmaker until unless you make your feature film. So I did my first feature film in 2016, which was premiered at uh, Berlin and Busan. Uh, it was self-funded uh, along with my friends from the film school. It, it, it was a zero budget film. We all got together and met the film. I still do that. But uh, luckily for my third feature film, this uh, Joseph's Son, I got funding from NFDC. Uh, it recently had its uh, world premiere at the main competition at Shanghai International Film Festival in June this year. Uh, that's how I've been making films. It's always a struggle. <laughs> okay. Rahul ji, I want to know you, you have been a hardcore commercial filmmaker, you know. So, commercial filmmaking, mein, how much is art and how much of commerce is there? Because finally, it's an art form. But you have to make films. It costs money. You have to recover the money, you have to make profits if you are the producer for yourself, if you are not the producer for your producer. So how much is art, how much is commerce and how do you strike a balance? Uh, <clears throat> Komal, striking the balance is uh, a million dollar question. Uh, the th problem we are having today, I think we have stopped shooting scripts. We are shooting numbers. That is the biggest problem. You know, uh, is that one important changing landscape of cinema? <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible landscape of cinema where we're shooting numbers instead of shooting scripts. Very rightly said. And uh, earlier also when I started making films, uh, I made a film called Arjun, which at that time turned out to be a game changer. Correct. You know, suddenly Very people right. felt, you know, why can't a commercial film be an artistic art film? also? also. There was no intention to do that, you know. I just made it because I felt this was the right way to tell the story. And even now when I see films, I do find a lot of films which are shifting over. You know, like um, a favorite film of mine, which uh, recently has been Monica, Oh My Darling. Okay. I think it was brilliant. That director did a brilliant job. But at the same time, I see a lot of trash. So... We are stuck in this rut which will, I think, carry on till we don't stop shooting numbers. His films have got a heart in them. 
you know, you've got to have a heart when you make a film. Uh, I'm sure Babin will agree with that. It's not just uh, numbers. And um, one more uh, strange, little away from this, which I'm finding is that uh, Babin is from the, the computer engineering. I was a nuclear, nuclear physicist. physicist. Money was also... Uh, thing. Why are so many people from the sciences coming towards making films? So that's... Uh, Have you found thing. an answer? No, I haven't. I even find from a lot of actors now saying that I was a engineer. And uh, you spoke about the changing landscape. We are definitely in for a change. But uh, cinema will always stay. And uh, so will OTT. Babanji, you know, like he said, ki you've got to have passion to make films. Money, etc. is all fine. But without passion, you can't make good cinema. Do you think in today's times, passion is somewhere going out of the window and it's all about money and monetization? I do believe uh, that, you know, that the commercial thing, I, I, I think that's, you know, all these years of documentary filmmaking, it was always supported by someone or the other, you know. When, when I venture into feature film, what I realize is, I mean, you need to get back your money to make your next film. I mean, so cinema is in, in a way, you don't need to, maybe you don't need to make a profit, but then you need to get back your money. So I think it's, it's, uh, so it's always commercial in a sense, you know, but, wh but whatever I've done till now, it like, I, you know, I have taken even studios which are very close to me, so, you know, I don't just make films. Probably that's why, uh, you know, I don't get producers also. Uh, so I, I make, f I take up stories which is close to me. So, you know, it's, it's always that passion, that, drive, that inside thing which drives you for, you know, next, for your next project. So I, I believe that is very important. But then uh, when you're working in industry, I think it's a very different environment. You know, you have also, you're in a way, you, you know, you also have to earn uh, for your livelihood. I think, I think that is also very important. Uh, but that's why I said, you know, I'm lucky. You know, the, I, so I, 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 so that way I feel that I'm very lucky that I'm born in Manipur and I'm able to do what I want to do. You mean to say if you were born in Mumbai or uh, Delhi? Yeah, I'm pretty You may not way. have, you may not have been able to do the kind they have, of cinema. They, they the, I mean, my fellow filmmakers or my friends from the institute, they're not that privileged enough. I'm very privileged that I'm, I'm born in a small place and I'm, I'm able to do what I'm, I want to do. And then what happens about the money part? Money, money is important. That's why, you know, all this, all this journey, documentaries, why I started shifting to feature film is, initially when I started having, thinking about a career in filmmaking, you know, we all grew up watching Hindi movies and Hollywood movies. It was always feature films. Documentary, I came to know about it when I started making films, you know. When I thought of making a career in filmmaking, I started knowing about documentary and I think it was the right medium for Manipur. You know, the kind of situation, the kind of, uh, you know, environment I was growing up. I think that documentary was very important uh, medium uh, that time. But, but then as I started making films, uh, you know, the technology also changed. And Manipur was the, I think, the first state in India which started, uh, you know, this so-called digital uh, film industry, uh, something like that. You know, oh, we, it was the first it, state. I yeah. never knew this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we I got, we this. got the, we, you know, the national awards to have feature films in the competition. You know, allowed uh, digital uh, formats to, you know, be allowed Compete. in the Achha. national awards and Indian Panorama. Oh. We did that. So at one point, I think 2000, uh, we were making around 200, 300 movies a year in, in so-called digital format. Wow. Wonderful. That's <laughs> wonderful. That's yeah, yeah. absolutely wonderful. That's history. I mean, uh, we pile in IA, PIL and all these things. And the DFF, yeah, agreed to it. And now it's, it's the chance, you know. We, ha we have the technology. We, ha we, you know, we can, you can shoot a you know, uh, film in Canon 5D. That's how I made my first feature film in Canon 5D. Uh, that was possible. So I think a lot of independent filmmakers have shifted. So because we were working in documentaries, now a lot of them 
uh, have started doing feature films just because of this. And also for the money part, because after making your, at least feature film has an audience, you know, you, you, your audience becomes bigger and chances of getting your money back is higher. I, so you can really see a sift of, uh, you know, uh, independent uh, feature films. That's why I think you, you are able to see different kind of, uh, you know, cinema in India. Yeah. Rahul ji, one, the economics of uh, documentaries and vis-a-vis -vis the economics of feature films, they are very, very different. Um, how is it that not many people bend towards documentary making? I, I think uh, documentary is uh, another art by itself. It's not that because you make a feature film, you can make a documentary also. You can't. It, it, it's a different animal whom you tame, and uh, you need very fertile minds to look at uh, documentaries. And uh, documentary makers making feature films, I think has been, it's easier for them to make feature films than it is for a feature film maker. And, um, Money-wise, yes, now uh, there is a lot of scope for documentaries because there are festivals all over the world, you have short films, you have documentaries, so you have more exposure to what is being done. You know, when we started making our films, we had no exposure. But now you have festivals in, of all kinds and uh, it's a very, very healthy thing happening. Is getting funding for documentaries still difficult? Yes, I think it's really difficult, especially at this time. Mm -hmm. I mean, earlier when I started my career, Doordarshan used to give some money to make uh, so-called, people might not call it documentary or television programs, but we used to make films with that money. So that is gone. And uh, now, I mean, a, a Films Division and NFDC, they have merged. So I, I think the government needs to do a lot in this uh, thing because uh, I think right now, if I look at India, I think uh, as far as my knowledge goes, PSBT doesn't, uh, I mean, provide any funding now. So only NFDC is giving some money for documentaries. And so it's, it's really sad. I mean, uh, there's nothing for documentary in this country. And unfortunately, unlike the rest of the world, like, I mean, uh, talking about Europe, we, we, we also don't screen documentaries in theaters. We don't have a culture of watching documentaries have, yes, at theaters. And uh, when OTD started in this country, uh, we were hoping, forget about documentaries. They don't, you know, you know what kind of, uh, uh, you know, content is there in OTD now. Forget about independent cinema. They're not bothered about documentaries. There's no, I mean, it was when, 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 when uh, thousands of channels were there, there was not a single channel in India dedicated to documentaries. OTT, they started with a big you know, uh, announcement that they, they will support independent cinema. But look at the, <laughs> the condition right now in OTT. Because uh, finally, it all comes down to business. Nobody is serious about art in this country. I mean, it's, it all, finally, it all comes down to business. And I think the only way for us independent cinema in this country is to uh, do your own. I mean, in Manipur, a lot of people call me a uh, festival filmmaker. Some, some kids, they still say that. Uh, but I, I take it seriously because that's the only uh, source for me, you know, to even to reach the audience. Reach out, reach out to Reach people. out to the audience or to get some money back for my, for my next project. But what I would like to know is, uh, because a lot of filmmakers are making content for OTT and because films are uh, streaming on OTT platforms, the whole kind of cinema that is being made is slowly but surely changing. Since documentaries are untouched by the OTT platforms, has this kind of a change come in the kind of documentaries being made or that is the same over the last, say, about five years or seven years? See what. It Documentaries are changing definitely. The way documentaries are being made are ch changing definitely in this country. In what sense, if you could elaborate a little? Changing in the sense, it's not because of the OTT platforms in India. It's because of the funding coming from outside tele outside the country. If you look at the latest documentaries that went to Oscars and all, they, it, it was all supported by outside, uh, you know, uh, funding from Europe and America and all these countries. It was never supported from India. I mean. 
one thing that has changed documentary in this country is I, my knowledge goes, is Dockage in Kolkata. Dockage is a platform, Asian uh, teaching forum in Kolkata, which has changed uh, documentary, the way documentaries are made, or documentary fundings are, you know, uh, we, we get funding, how, how to teach in front of people. This is what has changed documentaries in, in this country. Same, same thing applies for NFDC Film Bajar, which is for feature films. I think these are the only two platforms in India where we can go and, you know, uh, pitch, your, pitch your project and we hope some, some you know, <laughs> some person will come there and, and, and pick up our films or maybe interested in our project. You know, if you look at the last 10, 15 years, I think it's only because of Film Bajar, NFDC that we can see different kind of films coming out of this country. And it's also because of dockage in Kolkata that we are seeing different kind of documentaries in this country. You know, Rahulji, we are talking about the changing landscape of cinema. As you said in your reply to the previous question that OTT and cinema uh, filmmaking and filmmaking for the bigger screen will coexist. But uh, what exactly are the changes you've noticed uh, post lockdown? You know, there was the pre-lockdown era and the post-lockdown era because the platforms and platform viewing uh, went up so dramatically during the lockdown, suddenly people's uh, slant shifted towards OTT and therefore there are less footfalls in cinemas. So what exactly are the changes you are noticing? I feel, uh, Komal, uh, is that whether it is cinema or it's OTT, first thing is, we need to have a level playing field. We don't have a level playing field. What happened after the COVID, a lot of trash came onto the OTT. It arose the passions of the perverted Indian. I'm sorry to use this language, but uh, what I see on OTT, there is a lot of perversion. And I'm hopeful with the cinematograph act changing and uh, with uh, Mr. Anurag, Thakur being there, he's got a great vision. I, I hope that one day we have a playing field which is level. The difference in both these uh, formats, I think, is for the filmmaker. By filmmaker, I mean OTT authors. you got to decide on what is the format your film is going to be seen on. Because if it's going to be seen on cinema, you have a much larger canvas. If it's going to be seen on OTT, yes. you're in a... But if we see OTT, we can see some very, very great stuff of larger canvas being shot on OTT. It's how you play the game. I think that's what we need to learn. How do we play the game? Forget the, um, the kind of sex or the trash which we got. See, I'm not, I'm not against sex. It's okay. But I'm definitely against a lot of stuff I see. Or, you know, I, I mean... People, I've got a cutting somewhere where somebody said, I made my film for the OTT so I could get away with the censor as far as violence and sex Thanks went. Sense, so is this the way we're going to treat? And this is what we're going to get? That's not it. But um, the basic uh, difference lies in how you shoot it. You know, whether you're shooting it for cinema or you're shooting it for OTT, is it various kinds of things. In Cannes a couple of years back, I had seen a demonstration of a cinema, which was not, you know, cinema runs horizontal, right? Uh, this was vertical. So the frames had changed completely. Oh. And they had made wonderful films. You know, they had made wonderful films, keeping that in mind. I think the director basically, when he does a film, it's his frame which conveys to people what he's trying to say. You know, and um, on an OTT, you can convey the same thing, though in a smaller space. I think you just need to use the right technique and, and do it. You think, I'm very excited about them. Do you also share my excitement in saying that probably a lot of more sense will prevail now in the content being offered on OTT? Yes, a lot of more sense. That's why I say the OTT should come into the same playing field. You know, today with technology, we can control the audience who's watching the OTT. Like we have the sensors watching films, 
we can even control it without any changes. It's within the format itself. Like today, Netflix has suddenly said that you cannot share your share uh, your password. password. Yes, it's nothing. It's it's an algorithm to be changed, which is not tough. I've really been working on it for a long time, and uh, the algorithm. I've spoken to people, and um, uh, it's not difficult at all. We can have a era where uh, your viewing of the content is governed by your own subscription to the OTT or to the uh, uh, censors, to the films. So everything is possible, provided we have the will to do it. And I'm sure this will come about. I'm seeing hints of it. I've been reading this very carefully. I'm very happy, firstly, that they've changed the classification. Change. Yes. Just one more uh, question to each of you. Uh, there must be aspiring filmmakers or at least aspiring uh, industry people, you know, they aspire to be part of the film industry. So what would your advice to them be and what would your advice to aspiring filmmakers be? Let's begin with Mr. Pabban Kumar. I think education is very important for filmmaking. You have to be a very responsible person to make film. So I think education, you should be, you should educate yourself. I think film education is very important. We Unfortunately, we have very... Uh, good uh, film schools in this country, uh, but maybe with the coming of NEP, because I, this time I was looking for my sons, uh, uh, because he also wants to pursue a career in filmmaking. So we don't have any good institutes for, at least for UG level, even you, you have good institutes for PZ, uh, this thing, but, but at the UG, at UG level, level, we have very less, uh, that, you know, yeah. courses. So I think education is very important for filmmaking. I think only then you will be able to be a responsible filmmaker and a responsible citizen. Rahul ji? Well, the only uh, thing I have to say to people who are uh, interested in this, want to go ahead, is uh, don't get married. That's the only thing, yeah, yeah, please. Because uh, I'll, I, I, I'll give you a reason. <laughs> Are all those guys who are not married and I sympathize with them. They're lucky that they did not get married. I'll tell you, when you get married, like you said earlier, you have your own financial needs, etc. Then you've got a wife, you've got children. When you're not married, you are willing to take on any risk you want. I made a film called Love Story. That film was totally complete, you know it. I'd completed the whole film, and then I got into some problem with the producer, and uh, I removed my name as director from that film by taking a court order. I went to court and said, I don't want my name on the film. The yeah, name. and the court said, Ki, okay, he can remove his name, but the film cannot carry any director's name. So Love Story is the only film in the world which does not carry a director's name. I did, I did that because I was not married at that time. It didn't matter. It's a risk I took. You know, I was willing to take that risk. But once you're married with, and um, so don't get married, and you will in any case be happier off if you don't get married. Okay? Yeah, take it from me. <laughs> no, I, I just want to add something. Uh, it's, it's, you know, whatever you say is true, but, uh, you know, I my I have I mean, my wife has always supported me. You know, when I talk about Nine Hills One Valley, she was the producer. So even if you're married, you should have a working wife. Well, uh, the questions were uh, the your replies to the questions were brilliant. I'm sure a lot of people must have learned a lot of things. But I'm also sure that you all would have some questions. Rahul ji, namaskar. Swagat hai apka. Mera naam Anant Vijay hai. Main Dainik Jagran mein kam karta hu. Rahul ji, apne jab अपने फिल्म में आने की बात शुरू की तो आपने कहा कि चिंटू मतलब ऋषि कपूर आपके बहुत अच्छे मित्र थे जी मैंने कहीं पढ़ा था कि एक बार आप और चिंटू किसी होटल में पकड़े गए थे और आपके पास पैसे नहीं थे और उन लोगों ने आपको कैदी कर लिए बना लिया था बंदी बना लिया था ये क्या कहानी है क्या ये सच्चाई है कि उन लोगों ने आपको रोक लिया था आप दोनों के पास पैसे नहीं थे कुछ बताइए हम लोगों को सर ये सच्चाई है बिल्कुल चिंटू का ब्रेकअप हो गया था अपनी गर्लफ्रेंड के साथ तो मेरे घर पे आ गया था वो करीबन सात साढ़े सात बजे और बहुत अपसेट था कि उसकी गर्लफ्रेंड थी काफ़ी सालों से और फिर हमारे दोस्त से बिटू आनंद वो भी आ गए थे तो बैठे रहे वो शराब पीता रहा फिर हमने कहा चलो यार निकलते हैं यहाँ से तो हम चले गए ताज तो ताज में जो ऊपर रूफ टॉप 
रेस्टोरेंट था उनका रानदेवू हम लिफ्ट में गए और लिफ्ट सेकंड फ्लोर पे रुकी और चिंटू की गर्लफ्रेंड आई लिफ्ट के अंदर और उसके साथ उसका बॉयफ्रेंड भी था शी एड मीन अदर बॉयफ्रेंड अब हमको समझ नहीं आया कि हम बोले कि आई एम एंड वॉट डू यू से आई सेट हर लोट वर पर शी वॉज वेरी सेंसिबल वेन वी रीच रानदेबू शी टोल्ड हर बॉयफ्रेंड she finally got married to him and she no more well she left over she said let's go somewhere else ab chintu came and he was absolutely drunk and uh, now taj is a very expensive place you know i'm talking about what 25 30 years back and um, he told the steward there he said give everybody a drink i'm paying for it so i said chintu are you sure he said of course i'm sure and this was at the rooftop this was on the rooftop so this was his way of showing that so what uh, yeah. about the breakup i am still on top of I'm the world i am still on top of the world and of course people were very happy because there was a man paying for the drinks and they were happier when he said give them another round he was happier <laughs> and um, and he was totally sozer later on the bill came now the steward there was very upset because chintu had behaved badly with him so the steward when he brought the bill the bill came to Eight thousand rupees. At that time, eight thousand was a big amount. Yeah, there were no credit cards. So between Chintu, Bittu, and me, we had only six thousand bucks. We were two thousand rupees short. We told that steward. We said, "Look, he is Rishi Kapoor. You know him. You will get the money." He said, "No, I want the money." We said, "Okay, get us a hotel room, and we'll sign this in the hotel." He said, "No, you have to clear my bill." So we said, "What do we do till then?" He said nothing. I'm closing here. So he called three security guys. वो तीन security वाले आके हम लोग तीनों के हाथ पकड़ के हम वो नीचे ले गए. अब ताज के lobby में हम तीनों गुनहगारों की तरह बैठे हैं वहाँ पर एक एक हाथ security वाले ने पकड़ा हुआ है. Till finally the money was called for and paid. So that's what had happened. Any questions? So my name is Prashant Sagal. Uh, I'm an independent filmmaker based in Delhi. I was also a computer engineer in a. जस्टिफिकेशन गिवन इज दैट दस वॉन्ट दैट but i think a lot of audience members would love simple films but somehow the filmmakers are not making them anymore so what what do you think about that i agree with you whole heartedly on this kyunki vfx karna koi zaruri baat to hai nahi ye yahan par logon ne bana liya ki ji humko vfx karna hi hai nobody uses it the way it should be used it's very very rarely the people use that way ab if you take some of the biggest filmmakers in the world they do not use vfx at all use it only when you need it so i agree with you completely simplicity is the key to film or ott and that is what will always make it work thank you hello sir uh, mera naam gyan hai aur main uh, ek media student hu to uh, sir mera sawal ye hai ki kya jo great filme ban chuki hai उस चीज को रिक्रिएट करना जरूरी है क्या हम नई नई कहानियां नहीं कह सकते हालांकि नई कहानियां कही जा रही हैं बट मेरा सवाल वही है कि जो हम रिक्रिएट करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं ग्रेटनेस को और हम कहीं ना कहीं उन चीजों में फेल हो जा रहे हैं जो ग्रेट फिल्म्स बनी हुई है मेरे हिसाब से उनको हाथ नहीं लगानी चाहिए I'm going to make a greater film than the other, but nobody can because वो film जब भी बनी थी जो great film है उसमें सबके minds काम किए थे एक अलग एक ये था experience था and मेरे ख्याल से great film बन जाती आप calculate करके नहीं, नहीं बना सकते नहीं बना सकते hello sir myself Shreyasi I'm a media student and my question is to Rahul sir sir as you have mentioned that in the film love story you have uh, went to court and asked them to remove your name from the post of a director or producer but sir you are claiming that you have made that film at this particular platform so is it a right thing it's a known thing that he has made the film yeah. he actually went to court otherwise why will the court give him 
uh, the prayer that he is asking for. He said, I have directed the film. The producer did not deny that. But he said, my name is film se hata diya jai. So, so sir, is it wise as a filmmaker? It's a decision. Was very wise. I think people should follow that even today. You see, what happens is directors, the picture nahi chalti hai, wo bahut conveniently bolte hai, ki ji, meri film nahi chali, kyunke actor nahi hai kya tha, producer nahi hai kya tha, agar kya tha, to tumne film chodi kyun nahi isne ki? Tum chod dete, wo nahi karte log. He had the courage. He had the courage. This is something of courage. Have courage to make films. हेलो सर मेरा नाम समर्थ है और मैं बीजेएमसी सेकंड ईयर का छात्र हूँ सर मेरा क्वेश्चन आपसे ये है आपने जैसे भी कहा था कि सिंपलिसिटी इज़ द की तो सर जैसे आज के टाइम ओ टी के प्लेटफॉर्म पे लोग वायलेंटिक कंटेंट को ज़्यादा इम्पोर्टेंस देते हैं ना कि सिंपलिसिटी को तो सर हमें ऐसे ही स्टार्टिंग एज अ बिगिनर कौन सी ऐसी बातों का ध्यान रखना चाहिए ताकि हम उनसे ज़्यादा मोर इंटरेस्टिंग कंटेंट बना सकें एज अ सिंपल देखिए ऐसा कोई रूल है नहीं कि आपको इस चीज़ का ध्यान रखना चाहिए जो आपकी स्क्रिप्ट है वो स्क्रिप्ट ही आपको बोलेगी क्या करना चाहिए क्या नहीं करना चाहिए आ, मुझे रात साहब ने एक बात सिखाई थी जो मैं कभी नहीं भूलूंगा बोले बेटा जब भी तुम एक सिचुएशन में आओगे जब तुम्हें डिसाइड करना है कि ये करना है वो करना है जो तुम्हारा दिल कहे वो करना तुम्हारा दिल कभी गलत नहीं होगा तो ये बोलना कि भाई वायलेंस होगा या ये होगा वो वो नहीं Uh, hello sir my name is anushka i am an assistant professor from satyam group of institutions uh, my question is uh, sir how can we manage criticism and negative feedback from the audience like most of the time we do quick production and we get a lot of criticism from audience and we get demoralized so how can we manage this i think the person best to answer this is my friend uh, komal nato sitting out here <laughs> i think what you ought to do is take that criticism in your stride and learn from the criticism there is some criticism which is just for the sake of criticism ignore that completely but if the criticism is healthy and according to me that criticism is healthy the person criticizing should be able to say why he is criticizing and should be able to point you in a direction that this could have been better take such criticism in your stride learn from the criticism you will there's nothing to feel demoralized it's not the end of the world no project can be the end of the world for you there's always a tomorrow there's always something else to look forward to use this don't repeat the same mistakes you will succeed and if you open up a, a dictionary and uh, see the meaning of two words one is criticism and one is critique it will answer it yourself what we are talking about thank you you've been a lovely audience thank and you. thank you rahul ji thank and paban kumar ji excellent session thank you so much for your insightful replies thank you